If colour accuracy and the rendition of correct contrast is important to you, and it absolutely should be because you're a photographer, then this video is for you. We're going to look at how we can move away from Luminar's default and generic profile and get you using something that is camera matching, specific to your files, your sensor, and get your photos looking so much better. Out of all of the questions I've been asked about Luminar Neo, this is the one that comes up the most. It's not sexy, but it's super important, so let's cover profiles. Any of you that follow my editing videos will know that I always start my edits by applying a camera matching profile. And there's a really good reason for this. Applying a camera matching profile is gonna allow you to get better color rendition, better contrast, more authenticity to replicate what the camera truly saw, what your eyes saw when you were there at the scene, not Luminar's generic profile, which is a good profile, but at its very best, it's merely taking a guess at how it should be rendering and representing the data from your raw file and reinterpreting that into the pixel data that we see on our monitors. And so you wanna be getting this as close and as accurate as you possibly can right from the outset. It's pretty easy to do, so follow along and let's get you sorted. So the first thing we want to do is get hold of Adobe Digital Negative Converter. And this is a free DNG converter that we can download from the website just here. And I'm gonna put these links in the description below. So all you need to do is just click and go there. If you scroll down the screen, you're gonna see that you can download the latest version for either Mac OS or Windows. So download the appropriate one for you. And that's gonna give you this piece of software here. So all I'm gonna do is just click download the latest DNG converter. And that's going to download the installation file for me. So this piece of software is what's going to give us the keys to the castle. It comes complete with a set of digital camera profiles that should match most makes and models. If it doesn't have your one, I'm sorry, but it has so many that fingers crossed it should do. Once we've installed it on our system, that might be all we need to do. The developers at Skylum have assured me that Luminar is intelligent enough to check where these DCP profiles sit, where Adobe stores them, and then accesses those profiles. However, I've got another method to show you that if this doesn't work for you, we've got a workaround. So my download's now finished, so let's take a look at where all of these profiles sit on our computer and see how Luminar accesses them. Windows has given me a little warning down here just saying that the app couldn't be verified, but I'm quite happy to keep that because I trust what comes from Adobe. And now all we need to do is click on it to open it up. I'm just gonna accept the agreement, click next and click install. And now this is gonna run through and all of this writing that we see buzzing past here, this is literally all of the different camera profiles being installed onto my machine or literally just copied into a folder, which is, well, I'll show you where that sits in a second. Okay, now it's finished installing. We have an option to launch the converter, but I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna click finish and minimize this. So I've opened up Windows Explorer and now within the path C, Program Data, Adobe, Camera Raw, Camera Profiles, I now have access to two folders. Inside the Camera folder here, if I open this up, you'll see that we have a whole host of different Canon models. If I keep scrolling down, we've got Nikon models, we've got Olympus, Panasonic, Sony, they're all there. And if we were to just jump into one of these, so for example, I have the Nikon D850. If I open that, you'll see that we have my beloved Camera Flat Profile love that profile we've got landscape monochrome you've got different camera matching profiles available to you however if your camera model doesn't have a specific folder dedicated to it you're not going to have a whole host of different options for your profiles so it means that you are going to be limited just to one standard profile but that's okay that's better than the generic luminar one that's going to be thrown on there so let's jump into luminar and see what difference these profiles make so in my catalog view over on the left hand side, I have one folder set up for my Fujifilm X-T4 photos and I've created another folder that just has three photos from my Nikon D850. So if I just open up one of these photos here, here's my daughter being Cruella de Vil and I'll jump into the edit section. I wanna jump into the develop raw and as you can see in the camera profile section here, which if you don't see, it's probably just cause it's collapsed and you just need to click the arrow to expand it. You can see that the profile is the Luminar default. Traditionally, all you will see is the Luminar default profile, and then you'll have an option to add a custom DCP, or you can load in a DCP from a DNG, which is Adobe's digital negative file. However, you can see that we have all of these external profiles that Luminar has now found. So I can apply any one of these camera matching profiles. So personally, I love to work with a camera flat profile, and as the name implies, it's very flat, 
doesn't have much contrast, but that allows me the scope to bring back all of the contrast I need. However, if you wanted to go for something more punchy, you've got the option to do that. So camera landscape is a very punchy profile. We've also got monochrome options, but for this particular photo, a good option would be camera portrait because it gives us a nice level of contrast whilst kind of leaving the skin intact. It doesn't really add too much in the way of extra saturation or anything like that to the skin tones. So that's really nice to have that option. Whereas normally all you'd have is the Luminar default profile. And if we make a comparison just with the camera standard profile, you can see the difference in the color of the red here. The hue is very different between the Luminar default, which is generic and something that is camera specific. So the red that we apply when we click on the camera standard is much more accurate. So hopefully that should be all you need to do to get at least one camera matching profile into Luminar Neo. However, if that hasn't worked for you, I'm gonna show you another method where we can literally force those profiles into Luminar Neo. So let's take a look at that. So let's suppose you're just stuck with the Luminar default profile and these external profiles that we see here haven't actually loaded in. What we'd need to do is just come down to the add custom DCP. So you'd need to navigate to where the Adobe DNG converter actually stores those camera profiles. So this is the path for Windows, but I'll put the path for Mac users in the description below. And then we just simply need to come and find our camera model. So for example, let's suppose I've got a Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. All we would need to do is just select the profile that we want to use. So let's say a camera neutral, double click it, and here you go. We now have access to a Canon EOS 5D Mark IV profile. And you can see that that is added to the bottom of our profile list under custom profiles. And now that will always be there, unless in my case, I just wanna throw it away in the bin. That method's okay when you're just loading in one profile. However, a better approach, I think, when you've got a whole host of different profiles, if you're lucky enough to have access to them, is to copy them all from that Adobe folder that holds and contains those profiles, and then copy them directly into the folder that Luminar Neo accesses for its profiles. So I'll put the paths where you'd need to go in Mac or Windows to actually find those folders. But in any case, I'll also show you how to do it right now. So I'm going to minimize Luminar Neo. That's gonna bring me back into my Windows Explorer view where I'm already in this folder here. So let's suppose we're using, oh, I don't know, the Canon EOS 1DX. So all we need to do is drag over all these files if these are the profiles we want. And then in Windows, I can right click and copy those or I can press Control C on my keyboard. And now I'm gonna come over to a shortcut I've already created, which is a direct link to the correct path, which is users, your username, and then app data, roaming, Luminar Neo, data, camera profiles. And then when you get into that final folder, this is where those profiles are stored. And so all we need to do is just paste those profiles in. So I've just pressed Control V to paste those in. You can do right click and paste, or I believe Option and V on the Mac would do the same thing. So now we have these five profiles just dropped straight into the Luminar Neo camera profiles folder. And now if I close that down and I jump back to Luminar Neo, if we open up the profile section here and scroll to the bottom, hey, wait a minute, where are all our profiles we just put in? Well, don't panic. I believe it's simply because we need to reboot Luminar Neo and it'll find those for us. So let's close it down, reboot Neo, and now if I come over to the camera profile section and open that up, we can see that we now have access to custom profiles and all five of those Canon EOS 1D profiles that I dropped in are there. And let's just have a little flick through and see what this looks like. As you can see, it's certainly changing how Luminar is rendering the colors and the contrast, but it looks pretty awful. Why is that? Well, it's super simple. These profiles don't match my camera. And that is the problem when you don't use a camera matching profile. So this was purely for demonstration that I imported non-camera matching profiles, how to do it. But obviously you wanna make sure that your profiles are matching your camera and the color rendition is gonna be so much more accurate than just using the generic Luminar default profile. So I recommend that you follow these steps, get the correct profile working for you and straight away you're going to be working from a much better place when you begin your editing. Hope this has been helpful. Let me know if this works for you in the comments. I appreciate you watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.